Hello, my dear students. In the last class, we have already discussed about supermolecules. Supermolecule is used to describe supramolecular assemblies, which are complexes of two or more molecules that are not covalently bonded. That is, non-covalent interaction is seen in supermolecules. We know interaction between atoms fall into two categories, covalent interaction and non-covalent interaction. Covalent interaction and non-covalent bonds differ in their strength. Covalent bonds resulting from the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms are the strongest. Non-covalent interactions are somewhat weaker. In the case of non-covalent interaction, it does not involve the sharing of electrons, but rather involves more dispersed variations of electromagnetic interactions between molecules or within a molecule. The chemical energy released in the formation of non-covalent interaction is typically on the order of 1 to 5 kilocalorie per mole. Non-covalent interactions are critical in maintaining the three-dimensional structure of large molecules such as proteins and nucleic acid. In addition, they are also involved in many biological processes in which large molecules bind specifically but transiently to one another. These interactions also influence drug design, crystallinity and design of material particularly for self-assembly and in general the synthesis of many organic molecules. Mainly, we can classify non-covalent interactions into four categories. Electrostatic interaction, pi fx, van der Waals forces and hydrophobic fx. Here, we will discuss about two types of non-covalent interaction. They are electrostatic interaction and van der Waals forces. Firstly, electrostatic interaction. This is again classified into three types, ionic interaction, hydrogen bonding and halogen bonding. Ionic interactions involve the attraction of ions or molecules with full permanent charges of opposite signs. For example, sodium fluoride involves the attraction of the positive charge on sodium with the negative charge on fluoride. However, this particular interaction is easily broken upon addition to water or other highly polar solvents. Formation of sodium chloride is again an example for ionic interaction. These interactions can also be seen in molecules with a localized charge on a particular atom. For example, the full negative charge associated with ethoxide, that is the conjugate base of ethanol, is accompanied by the positive charge of an alkali metal salt such as sodium cation. That is, sodium ethoxide formation is an example for ionic interaction. Another type of electrostatic interaction is hydrogen bonding. We know a hydrogen bond is a specific type of interaction that involves dipole-dipole attraction between a partially positive hydrogen atom and a highly electronegative, partially negative oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur or fluorine atom. It is not a covalent bond, but instead it is classified as a strong non-covalent interaction. It is responsible for why water is liquid at room temperature and not a gas. Most commonly, the strength of hydrogen bond lies between 0 to 4 kilocalorie per mole, but can sometimes be as strong as 40 kilocalorie per mole. The interaction between ammonia and water is an example for hydrogen bonding. Compounds having hydrogen bonding show abnormally high melting and boiling points. The high melting and boiling points of the compound containing hydrogen bond is due to the fact that some extra energy is needed to break these bonds. We know water is a liquid whereas hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen selenide, hydrogen telluride all are gases at ordinary temperature. In water, hydrogen bonding causes linkages in the water molecule which result in the boiling point of water is more than that of other compounds. Similarly, ethanol has a higher boiling point than diethyl ether because there is hydrogen bonding in the ethanol.
Another type of electrostatic interaction is halogen bonding. This is similar to that of hydrogen bonding. In halogen bonding, a halogen atom acts as an electrophile or electron-seeking species and forms a weak electrostatic interaction with a nucleophile. The nucleophilic agent in these interactions tend to be highly electronegative, for example, oxygen, nitrogen or sulfur, or may be anionic bearing a negative formal charge. As compared to hydrogen bonding, the halogen atom takes place the partially positively charged hydrogen as the electrophile. Another type of non-covalent interaction is Van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are a subset of electrostatic interaction involving permanent or induced dipoles. This include permanent dipole-dipole interaction alternatively called Keesom force, dipole-induced dipole interaction or Debye forces. Induced dipole-induced dipole interaction commonly called London dispersion forces. Dipole-dipole interactions are electrostatic interactions between permanent dipoles in molecules. These interactions tend to align the molecule to increase attraction, that is reducing potential energy. Normally, dipoles are associated with the electronegative atoms including oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and fluorine. The interaction between two acetone molecules is an example for dipole-dipole interaction. Since oxygen atom is more electronegative than carbon, the electrons associated with that bond will be closer to the oxygen than the carbon, creating a partial negative charge on the oxygen and a partial positive charge on the carbon. Another example for dipole-dipole interaction is the interaction between two hydrogen chloride molecules. In HCl molecule, have a dipole moment because of the hydrogen atom has a slight positive charge and the chlorine atom has a slight negative charge. Because of the force of attraction between oppositely charged particles, there is a small dipole-dipole force of attraction between adjacent hydrogen chloride molecule. Another type of Van der Waals forces is dipole-induced dipole interaction. A dipole-induced dipole interaction is due to the approach of a molecule with a permanent dipole to another non-polar molecule with no permanent dipole. This approach causes the electrons of the non-polar molecule to be polarized towards or away from the dipole of the approaching molecule. For example, what would happen if we mixed hydrogen chloride with argon? We know argon has no dipole moment. The electrons on an argon atom are distributed homogeneously around the nucleus of the atom. But these electrons are constant motion. When an argon atom comes to close to a polar hydrogen chloride molecule, the electrons can shift to one side of the nucleus to produce a very small dipole moment that lasts for only an instant. By distorting the distribution of electrons around the argon atom, the polar hydrogen chloride molecule induces a small dipole moment on this atom, which creates a weak dipole-induced dipole force of attraction between hydrogen chloride molecule and argon atom. This force is very weak with a bond energy of about 1 kJ per mole. Here, a single Non-polar molecule is shown in figure, that is spherical atom with no dipole. The dot indicate the location of the nucleus. In the next figure, upon the approach of a charged ion, the electrons in the atom respond and the atom develops a dipole. This is another example for dipole-induced dipole interaction. The interaction between oxygen molecule and water molecule. Here, the dipoles of water induces a dipole in oxygen by distorting the oxygen electron cloud. The dipole can cause electrostatic attraction or repulsion of the electrons from the nonpolar molecule depending on orientation of the incoming dipole. Atoms with a larger atomic radius are considered more polarizable and therefore experience greater attractions as a result of the Debye force. Another type of Van der Waals force is London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces are the weakest type of non-covalent interaction. 
they are also known as induced dipole induced dipole interactions and present between all molecules even those which inherently do not have permanent dipoles dispersive interactions increases with the polarizability of the interacting groups but are weakened by solvents of increased polarizability we know helium is liquid at temperature below 4.2 kelvin but we cannot explain why this because there is no dipole dipole interaction or dipole induced dipole interaction in between helium atoms we know helium atom is perfectly symmetrical but movement of the electrons around the nuclei of a pair of neighboring helium atoms can become synchronized so that each atom simultaneously obtains an induced dipole moment these fluctuations in electron density occur constantly creating an induced dipole induced dipole forces of attraction between the pairs of atoms this force is relatively weak in helium but atoms or molecules become more polarizable as they become larger because there are more electrons to be polarized here instantaneous uneven distribution of electrons in helium atom induces a dipole in non polar helium atom and resulting in an attractive force another example is hexane hexane is a molecule with no polarity or highly electronegative atoms but it is liquid at room temperature due to mainly london dispersion forces here one hexane molecule approaches another a temporary weak partially negative dipole on the incoming hexane can polarize the electron cloud of another causing a partially positive dipole on that hexane molecule in the absence of solvents hydrocarbons such as hexane form crystals due to dispersive forces the sublimation heat of crystals is a measure of the dispersive interaction while these interactions are short lived and very weak they can be responsible for why certain non polar molecules are liquid at room temperature today we have discussed about non covalent interactions and their classification here we have explained two types of non covalent interaction electrostatic interaction and van der waals forces in the next class we will discuss about the another category of non covalent interaction that is pi fx and hydrophobic fx thank you